All right, the purpose of this video is to go over the difference between an ionic com compound and a covalent compound uh, because we learned different naming rules and how to write the formulas and names for both of these types of compounds. So you want to be able to tell the difference between them. It's pretty easy, but um, you, know, you just have to get used to asking yourself a couple questions before you go right into naming something. So for this video, all we're going to do is go through a couple questions from the mixed naming assignment, and we're not actually going to answer them, we're just going to label them as covalent or ionic, going over and following these rules from your notes. So first of all, covalent compounds are when you have two nonmetals bonded together, um, and the way you name it is you put the first element's name, the second element you change to ide, um, and you use prefixes for those. An ionic compound is different because it has a metal and a nonmetal. You name these using your ions list. You have to balance charges. You do not use prefixes for these. If you need to go over specific rules and examples for naming either one of these types of compounds, there are videos for that. So um, you can click the link in the description or find the videos on the website uh, for those specific tutorials. So just to remind ourselves the difference between metals and nonmetals. Remember, you can use your periodic table. The staircase divides the periodic table into nonmetals on this side and metals on this side. So, if you have two things from this part of the periodic table, that would be two nonmetals and it would be a covalent compound. If you have one thing from this side and one thing from the metal side of the periodic table, it's going to be an ionic compound. Or if it's two ions from your ion list, a cation and an anion. So, we're just going to go through a couple of these and label them as either covalent or ionic. And I'm just gonna label it on the margin here. This would be something that would be really good for you to do on quizzes or tests or on your homework um, before you go into naming something just to make sure you're using the correct rules. So for number one, uh, it's sulfur and chlorine. So if we look on the periodic table, um, sulfur is here and chlorine's here. They're both in the non-metal section. They're both non-metals. Um, which means that this would be a covalent compound, right? Because covalent is when we have two non-metals. So I'm gonna put a C here for covalent. Go to the next one, which has phosphorus and oxygen. So we go to our periodic table. Phosphorus is here, oxygen's here. Again, two non-metals, so it's gonna be covalent. Number three has iron and oxygen. So iron's right here, oxygen's here. So this time we have a metal and a non-metal. And when that happens, according to our notes here, a metal and a non-metal means it's an, an ionic compound. So that would have different naming rules. Again, if you want examples of how to actually name these, watch the videos for those. Um, number four, we have nitrogen and oxygen. So nitrogen's here, oxygen's here, two non-metals. So this would be a covalent compound. Number five is sodium and bromine. So sodium's here, it's a metal. Bromine's here, it's a non-metal. So that's an ionic compound. We'll do a few more. Sulfur and oxygen for number six. Sulfur's here, oxygen's here. Two non-metals would be covalent. Number seven looks a little crazy. Um, it's calcium, which is a metal, and then here you have a polyatomic ion, phosphate. Remember, so if it's on the ions list, it's definitely going to be ionic, plus, you know, since calcium's a metal, it will also be ionic. And then we'll, we'll end with number eight. Magnesium is a metal located here. And then CO3 is another polyatomic ion. It is carbonate on your ions list. So since it's on your ions list as a polyatomic anion, that one's also going to be ionic. So this is a really good habit to get into when you're doing homework questions, quizzes, or tests uh, for naming, just to make sure you're using the right rules. Um, check out the videos for covalent naming or ionic naming if you want more practice doing that.